<laughs> okay. We're all back. We're back. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> it works. I love when it works. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's Learning Space. My name is Nicole Gallucci. I'm a postdoc at CosmoQuest and also Noisy Astronomer on Twitter. Uh, this is our weekly show about uh, science and astronomy, education and outreach topics. And I have with me my co-host, Georgia Bracey. Hello. Hi, Georgia. And we are not shut down. <laughs> <laughs> and we have two special guests from Night Sky Network. So we have Dave Prosper and Vivian White. Hi Hi there. Guys. Thank you for joining us, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. Thanks for having us. To share out the link as you're watching. Um, I've set up comment trackers, so we are uh, encourage your questions and comments and feedback throughout the broadcast. So comment tracker is looking at YouTube and at Google Plus posts. Um, if anyone knows <laughs> how to get the comments from the event page into com the new comment tracker. I would love that feedback. Uh, not right now, but after the broadcast. Um, so ping me uh, if you know how to do that, because our usual way of doing that broke. Uh, but I will be watching the event page as well for comments, so feel free to say hi. Um, and so we're just going to go ahead and get started um, talking with Dave and Vivian. So uh, I I made a video with you guys at the Astronomical Site of the Pacific meeting, mm -hmm. which was super awesome. So thank you for that, letting me film you <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about the meteorite activity. But um, can you tell us a little bit about what is the Night Sky Network? What's its, what's its um, like main purpose? Sure. Um, we are a coalition of 430-ish amateur astronomy clubs from across the country. And um, at the Night Sky Network, we work to support the clubs who are doing outreach um, in their communities. So we uh, support them with toolkits, which have lots of activities and handouts and star charts and things they might use uh, while doing outreach. And we also support them with annual pins and prizes for everybody doing great outreach. So we try and um, give clubs you know, make the culture of outreach really important within amateur astronomy clubs because they're doing it anyway. They love sharing the night sky. Mm -hmm. um, and so we help them by recognizing all their great work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Yeah, we, I've heard a lot about Night Sky Network from, uh, we had uh, Terry and Jeff Mentz on the program oh, a while yeah. back, so from Riverbend fantastic. Astronomy. I recently officially joined the Riverbend Astronomy Club as well. <laughs> That's so. right. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Remember, and then, yeah, we joined, uh, Night Sky, our, our SIUE star parties joined the Night Sky Network, so thank you for encouraging me to do that. Um, Wonderful. Oh, you're welcome. And you got yeah. some of our goodies now, too. Yeah, I know. I have some <laughs> <laughs> we just sent out a new toolkit. <laughs> yeah, so I got my first actual toolkit. Toolkit. So this is, could you tell us a little bit about the toolkits overall um, and how that uh, mm -hmm. clubs can use those? Sure. We have 11 toolkits now, 11 or 12 toolkits, and they <laughs> range uh, in topic from the solar system to supernova to black holes, and it gives clubs a way when they're doing outreach to talk about kind of, you know, the big concepts at a very, um, with at least a very simple introduction so that everybody can understand what they're um, talking about. We found, uh, so the Night Sky Network's been around for 10 years now. This is our 10th year. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And we were started by JPL. Um, and it was just the idea that the clubs, the people who are in the clubs have so much great information. And sometimes they have a hard time getting the public excited about it in the same way they are. Because a lot of what we do is look at faint fuzzies. and. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if you don't have the background information <laughs> to know what you're looking at, they might not be as exciting as we think they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Dave and I are both astronomy club members. I've been with the San Francisco Amateur Astronomers for many years and just joined the East Bay Astronomical Society mm -hmm. where uh, I moved to the East Bay of San Francisco. Yep. And Dave and has been with them for a while. Like five years, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we I'm are amateur young... astronomers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're not your typical amateur astronomers. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, what? Oh, go ahead. No, I just wonder what your backgrounds, what your backgrounds are that brought you to working for Night Sky Network. Yeah. Mm. Go ahead. Well, for me, it was kind of funny because I had like kind of a I was a liberal arts graduate, but always wanted to do astronomy and ended up doing weird jobs all the time. So. I would do. I ended up like moving out to the Bay Area after living in Annapolis, Maryland for a while. And um, I grew up in the country, so when I came out here and I found out that there was a telescope up in the hills at Chabot Space and Science, and I'm like, I'm going there. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then from there, I started taking classes in this side because 
I could do computer work pretty good, but it wasn't my passion. Yeah. But the funny part, if you're an IT person and you're like clicking in all the NASA websites and doing astronomy homework, um, your bosses will tend to just go, oh, cool, what's that? <laughs> and just let you get away with awesome. stuff, which is That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> so um, and then from that, like, um, I, was, I became the program director at East Bay Astronomical Society and sort of like a figure at Chabot as, as, in so much as I go there and uh, the security guard's like, do I need to let you in anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> which is funny. And um, from there, like, I just got an, I, I used the Nice Guy Network for the East Bay Astronomical Society. And I actually ended up seeing a, um, in my Craigslist job search that I had, which was <laughs> literally a little bot that I had that just loaded up um, yeah. jobs, astronomy. <laughs> um, there was a post from the ASP about um, Night Sky Network Coordinator, and I jumped at it. And the description was, are you in an astronomy club? Can you write? Did you, do you have, you know, it was like, oh, it's me. It's perfect. <laughs> and you just started uh, six months ago. Yeah, this is yeah six months. Six months ago or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's great. Yeah. Yeah, our founder uh, Marnie Berenson uh, mm -hmm. retired about a year ago, and uh, I've been working mm -hmm. with, with the Night Sky Network for about seven years out of the ten. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got a background. I have a bachelor's degree in physics and astronomy from San Francisco State mm -hmm. and uh, started volunteering with the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, Pacific. So we both work at the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, which is mm -hmm. uh, who administers the Night Sky Network for JPL. Um, and it's a fun string of contracts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Um, so from volunteer, I started with sorry <laughs> with uh, Project Astro, volunteering in the classroom, and then they yeah. said, "Well, just come on in." And, and <laughs> I, I've been there for about eight years. That's yeah, cool. That's really cool. Yeah. How did you both get connected with the amateur groups? Because I know that's something the Night Sky Network can help with. I think mm. too, right? If someone's looking for a group, oh, yeah. local. But yeah. how did you guys get that connection? For me, I um I literally I was taking a class up in the Oakland Hills. And it was an observational astronomy class. And the professor took us up to the Space and Science Center because they actually are able to use their old telescopes mm -hmm. for, um, like, they have the, like, the classic giant old uh, reflectors up there. Like, Beautiful. there's, like, a 20-inch, or, no, 18-inch <laughs> <laughs> reflector um, that they use. And um, wow. they actually are using it for exoplanet hunting. Off yeah. of, I remember still, it was 55 Cancri. And then the people, they were like, there's young people that are still hanging out. Like, they said that <laughs> the class could go. Dave's still here. <laughs> and, like, and then from there, like, I'm just like, oh, the East Bay Astronomical Society, they work with Chabot. Okay, that's cool. And then they, like, I kind of got sucked in. And yeah. it was cool because I was just like, oh, awesome, star parties. Oh, I can, like, touch the telescope. That's that's cool. Yeah. Wait, I can do all these things. This is awesome. Sweet. <laughs> so that's what happened to me. And I'm kind of surprised that more of the astronomy professors don't encourage students to go out and join their local star, you know, astronomy club. I, it's not, you know, I had to look up the San Francisco Amateur Astronomers while I was still a student. I had no idea they even existed. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. a lot of my colleagues got out of college without ever having really looked through a telescope. That's the running gag. Much time. Yeah, through a telescope. <laughs> like, they could do a lot of really complex analysis, but they couldn't find a constellation for the yeah. save their lives. So right. it's, it was a really good complement to learning astronomy mm -hmm. in yeah. textbooks. Yep. Yeah, uh, but if you go to the Night Sky Network, you can actually just put in your zip code and find an astronomy club close to you. So yes. we're trying to make it as easy as possible to uh, find an astronomy club whoever you are, wherever you are in the U.S. anyway. And unofficially, depending on <laughs> funding, we might be able to make it even easier. Yeah. We have an, We want to be able to make it more mobile friendly and more mm. GPS location aware. Yes, we're so working depending, on it. We're working on it, but it's still, you know, pending. Get our fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> It'll happen. It'll happen. But we have, we have uh, good hopes for it. Yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah, whenever people ask me, and people ask astronomers a lot, what kind of telescope should I get? And I am a terrible amateur astronomer. And so <laughs> I 
tell them what I should have done when I was a kid, and I didn't realize this was happening around me in, in New York as well. Um, find an astronomy club near you, and yeah. let them, they will let you play with their telescopes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you, you, you know, actually test things out before you, you buy something. Mm -hmm. So I, I always point people to that website. <laughs> Tonight's yeah. going to be like, put in yeah. your zip code, da 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 mm -hmm. Uh, or if they're local, I know who to send them to. So that That's one of the great things about the amateur astronomy clubs, the um, the sort of nationwide culture. They're all very similar in a lot of ways, and so that's how the Night Sky Network is actually able to function. Even before it got implemented, there was this, there's always like the officers that get a, like, or the people that kind of do the outreach. And right. There's like a, usually a telescope lending program yeah. and right. that sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, the telescope lending program, that's actually another part that I got sucked into. Because yeah. it was like, oh, it was, I'll fix these up. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they did that at the that Charlottesville. Work. Yeah, they did that at the Charlottesville Astronomical Society, too. I went to a couple of their meetings. I'm like, you're just letting people borrow your awesome telescopes? Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Astronomy clubs are, are really just very generous with time and resources mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. <laughs> love, they love to share, and they love yeah. to tell you all about the equipment, right? And oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it. And so it's, yeah, it's so, they're so you know, good with those, mm -hmm. um, that advice, and yeah. and if you can go to a star party and actually see one, you know, see a different mm -hmm. telescope, mm -hmm. that's even better. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> it's really fun to see people get, getting shocked, too, like, just at, like, something like the moon. Yeah. Really? I remember um, when I, I started just setting up as part of it, um, just doing stuff on the sidewalk for Halloween, because yeah. why not? And there was a really yeah, spooky moon. Yeah. And um, little kids and adults would just like look in the telescope and just go, whoa! Because <laughs> they're like, oh yeah, the moon. I see the moon all the time. It's what the? <laughs> I've never seen it like that. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. true. It's really a big wow. Yeah. <laughs> that and Saturn. Which yeah. Is kind yeah. of yeah. every time right now, but... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that was fun. It's like, did you first put a picture on the end of the telescope? Yeah. Like, no, oh, yeah. no, you're really looking at photons from Saturn. Yeah. <laughs> it just came directly to, oh, your eye only. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we have, have an awesome experience. Yeah. yeah. So, so you have these kits, and, and, and actually, you know, I was telling you guys, I'm finally opening one that I just got for the SIU Star Party. Mm -hmm. Great. We just um, finished this one. Can you tell us a little bit about these, these different kits that you have? Um, yeah, available. the one you're holding, I, ha I brought one too. Um, this is our newest resource. It's um, observing cards for amateur astronomers, um, either at the telescopes or uh, if you just want to be a sky guide, which is fun. Um, they were sponsored by Planet Quest. I know, they're some really, really cool. great um, collections. These are meant for actual people who know quite a bit already about the night sky, but it gives uh, them ways to talk about, this one specifically talks about exoplanets and okay. how making that connection can really get your visitors excited mm -hmm. about um, astronomy and, and what they're looking at. Because, you know, sometimes looking at a double star might not seem all that exciting <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know some of the background. So, you know, if you know that one of them has a gas giant planet orbiting the larger yeah. star, that's another thing to get them thinking and talking uh, about with the public. So um, these are made, f like I said, for the amateur astronomers. They're also, mm -hmm. Dave, we have a red light version. I don't know if that's going to show hey. up. Maybe right. tilted sideways. I yeah. use yeah. my phone in red yeah. node all the time. Awesome. Exactly. Well, we actually got these. We have two separate versions that are um, for the mobile devices, which are regular, um, just regular color and actual red. Right. Just straight up so you don't have to worry about adjusting it or putting the red right. film over it. So you oh. can't show pictures as well if you need mm -hmm. to about, you know, the phases of Venus, for example, mm -hmm. or um, right. red stars and size comparisons and things like that. So uh, this is our newest. We also just redid, as part of the same toolkit update, um, the Celestial Treasure Hunt. So it kind of goes along with these cards. Right. And I, can, I can do the... Oh, yeah. Oh, Vanna here. Um, <laughs> Vanna! <laughs> the Celestial Treasure Hunt. Here it is. Um, it gives you a little, like, you can hunt down, like, different oh. objects. Like, I see a galaxy, I see a comet, or I see um, a planet, and a little bit of an explanation of the life cycle of stuff, too. Mm. It's and also how it great. all fits together, how all these different things you might okay. be seeing fit together. Thank you. And it's <laughs> wonderful familiar. for especially groups and kids and stuff, yeah? Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> Because there's a lot of times, too, where amateur astronomers are called to go to schools or yes. school kids come to them mm -hmm. with, like, and you can tell because they've got their little notebook and a folder, and you're like, 
your teacher sent you yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you supposed to see? And then you, and you literally, like, you'll sign your paper and right. stuff. Yep. Yeah. And, um, but this is, like, that's, like, a perfect thing for them to actually checklist all the stuff they were supposed to right. do. That's yeah, and the, I forgot to mention, the observing cards give examples of what you might want to see. So they're good for new amateur astronomers who are not mm -hmm. as used to observing maybe like double me. stars. Or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or even, exactly. Or for me, like where I'm, you know, I'm sitting there and like the stuff we were looking at drifts behind a tree oh, yeah. or sets. We're like, oh, um, oh, uh, uh, double stars, quick. Yes. What do we do? Yeah. So does it actually give you things you can say, sort of like exactly. some dialogue questions to help you interact with the public? Yeah, so it not only gives yeah, you kind yeah. of the general information of how far, which everybody always asks, and they don't actually understand the answer even. Mm -hmm. um, it, it gives you <laughs> kind of comparisons oh, to other things. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, talking about Algeba has got both of these large stars are nearing the end of their lives. It doesn't bode mm -hmm. well for the planet orbiting the larger star. Mm -hmm. Talking about, you know, what's going on with these stars right now and, and why you might care. We've about. actually been updating all of our videos um, from the past few years and putting them up on YouTube. And the, a lot of them also have like literally like it shows people like we set up stuff so how you can interact, like questions people ask and how you can phrase things better too instead of just saying, oh it's, it's an X trillion miles away or 42 parsecs <laughs> and it's a class B da 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 and people right. like uh huh. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they just glaze yeah. over. <laughs> they kind of make it more accessible. Yeah. yeah, connect with it a little better. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, we actually even you were talking about Saturn. We have a whole set of training videos for the amateurs on how to talk to people, and one of them is called "How to Get a Wow When You're Not Showing Saturn," and it's about how to. <laughs> Uh, you know, put things in context so that people really do think they're interesting, even if it's not the most visually stunning thing they've ever seen, even if it doesn't look like what they saw in, in Hubble. National Hubble Geographic. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. so that's great. I didn't know you guys had videos. So are those on the website also? They are. Mm -hmm. Okay. As well as YouTube somewhere? Yep. Yeah, we're yep. just switching them all over to YouTube finally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that we have a little time off. <laughs> exactly. That's been my project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I used the um, the supernova demo ones um, oh, recently to go through cool. that, and, and it worked really well when I practiced it, and then I did it in front of a whole bunch of people, and it failed. <laughs> oh. uh, I, just, I was practice. nervous, and yeah. I dropped the balls wrong, and it just went, oh. bup, 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 bup. <laughs> <laughs> So practicing is good, but other than the gravity fail, um, <laughs> the video that was really gravity, fantastic. was not you. <laughs> yeah, and, and since, while I was waiting for a hot plate to heat up, I was like, I'm just going to keep going, you know? I had yeah. all this yeah. great material to work from. So those, those videos are really, really cool. And uh, we also like to give videos. people, actually a part of it too, is just we like to give people material for when stuff isn't cooperating, you know, you've got fog, right. it starts to rain, but you've set up, yeah, and you all know, these people showed up your telescope event. broke, <laughs> which happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that's a really great thing, what we do a lot with our different events with the Riverbend Astronomy Club that Nicole mentioned, um, it's just nice because you have telescopes set up over in one area and then in another area, maybe a more light polluted area, like an mm -hmm. ice cream stand where we are often, <laughs> exactly. um, you know, you've got the area with the tables, the demos, the kids can come and play and you can see and people can bring their dogs over and it's more of a, you know, yeah. fun, social, interactive area but then you can go over and you have the telescopes where it's darker and a little quieter sometimes, but so you've got two kinds of activities. <laughs> yeah. well, not not really very high. dark near Annie's. <laughs> <laughs> we go for the ice cream. A little, little darker. Just a little. <laughs> but we observe you draw people in with the ice cream. Yeah, and that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have ice cream at our star parties. Yeah. <laughs> no, the custard stand lets us set up oh, in yeah. our parking lot. So. <laughs> I did a star party once at a uh, biker bar near here, yeah. and <laughs> the awesome. treats were decidedly different. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of different and varied audiences, it was these stay rats. <laughs> They're actually um, pretty funny. <laughs> so is is it is the YouTube channel? Sorry, uh, we have a question from oh. Dito Bibra. Is the is the YouTube channel Night Sky Network? YouTube.com. That's, that's yeah. okay. So mm -hmm. that's that. He's got the URL. And yeah. uh, Julie Frey. Hi, Julie, with the TARDIS. Uh, also commented that the Milwaukee Astronomical Society has loner scopes as well. So. Great. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> next time we visit. Mm -hmm. Great idea. I'm so using this next time. 
<gasps> is yeah. the map of uh, it's just it's just it's a typical star map which I actually have a high school teacher that comes every time we're open brings his students and is teaching them to read these oh, uh, but this points out which of these visible stars have exoplanets I love yeah. this yeah because yeah sometimes it's like I can't find something I'm gonna point it at a star that was actually something. a surprisingly involved project to update really? those maps yeah too. wow because we had the previous ones from what I think they were two thousand and nine, yeah, yeah, and that was, there was pre Kepler, and oh. now post Kepler, it's all changed. Like, yeah. and and so we had to readjust everything. But also, yeah. like, if you look up like how people are defining an exoplanet and the arguments about like the right. Alpha Centauri um, mm -hmm. potential planets, a perfect example of is it there? Is it not there? Da -da 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 -da. Right, yeah. Is it a candidate? Planet mm -hmm. or is it a, yeah. Exactly. Is it confirmed? So going through that, we're like, wait, so we go through several things. We go, yeah. okay, you know, Wikipedia lazy. Okay, it's there. <laughs> okay, wait, now we gotta go to NASA. We didn't get all our information okay. on Wikipedia. Okay, now we go to NASA. Wait, no, that doesn't work out there. <laughs> but as someone just yeah. got updated the page, and let's go over to the Kepler people. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of information out there. And, it's, I mean, the science is just exploded. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a challenge, too, yeah. to keep everything... Mm -hmm. Evergreen, yeah. as yeah. best as possible, and updated when we can. Yeah, and there are two new um, PowerPoints that came out with this set here. So, you, uh, one all on Kepler and the search for um, habitable exoplanets, and then uh, one just about exoplanets and where we are with finding them in general. Um, so those are new and updated. Um, and as soon as the website. Um, gets back up, you will hear all about it. It'll be everywhere. <laughs> well, the website is currently working, I should mention. Yes. Yes. Uh, I just logged in today to log how many visitors I had last night for my event. Right. So you can work You can work on it. Um, yes. But I, I understand you guys can't answer questions or send stuff at the moment. So. Mm -hmm. Or update, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. We can yeah. backload stuff, but we can't press publish yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah. but if you have a club that uses night sky network and you should um, yes. you can still log you can still log into it so that that's good <laughs> that's actually an interesting point one of the things that the night sky network also does on the back end for clubs is we're kind of a club management system and helps clubs manage their outreach events so we have uh, contact groups that you can send messages to that allow them to quickly and easily get you know um, updated on the status of an event or get a text message about the event if it's going to be canceled those kind of things um, also allows clubs to keep yes. up with their membership manage membership and dues and those kind mm -hmm. of things so um, it's, it's a pretty uh, Especially if background. our club, for example, had one person that sort of had keys to the kingdom for everything, and right. then he passed away. And it wasn't any kind of like power move. It was just he was Network. always doing stuff. And yeah. You always had every answer, and then he passed away, and everyone was like, "Oh no, yeah. where's our stuff?" There yeah. goes your reason. organizational memory. Yeah. Exactly. But using the Night Sky Network is at least helpful to, because then we can keep track of everything, yeah. including events, who did what. Because a lot of times in our meetings, we're like. Who has the key to that closet? Yeah. Oh, we opened it at that party. Well, who was running that party? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> when I became treasurer of the San Francisco Amateur Astronomers, they handed me a big box of files, and I was like, "You're kidding, right? <laughs> this is it." <laughs> and so this kind of that was part of the inspiration. Uh, we did a huge study back in 2008 um, about what amateur astronomy clubs said they wanted, and this got thousands of uh, responses from across the country of amateur astronomers, amateur astronomers in clubs, and uh, and we took all that information and worked with a grant from the National Science Foundation, and actually um, were able to come up with this system along with some of the training videos and uh, more toolkits that they had said they were really missing out on. So um, it's great. It, it was in response to what they said they wanted, which is how we do everything at the Night Sky Network. We're kind of proud of that. We're really proud of that. <laughs> we do a lot of testing on all the materials. Mm -hmm. um, so each of them go through many rounds of testing before we send them out. Um, and and we, uh, we try to only work in response to what the clubs say they want. Yeah. Do you have some of the clubs pilot your new activities then? Oh yeah, we oh, have, yeah, we have yeah. A, definitely. We first bring about a dozen club members from around the country in, and we call it the Alpha Test, and we throw a whole bunch of activities at them, and they do them really quickly, and they tell, give us their feedback, and from that, you know, a toolkit can start with maybe 20 activities, mm -hmm. and from that, it maybe calls down to a, a dozen or so, and and then we send them out for the clubs 
uh, mm -hmm. better versions that have been uh, revised, send them out to clubs across the country to mm -hmm. test with the public. And we get their feedback on that before we make up the final version. So it's pretty extensive, and uh, it takes about a year and a half to produce a toolkit. So wow. um, yeah, it's, it's a lengthy and uh, really iterative process. I like mm -hmm. doing that. That's what I get to do now, which is my, mm -hmm. I love yeah. my job. <laughs> Yeah. You get to play test science. Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> Her office is amazing. <laughs> it's got all kinds of balls and sticks and glitter <laughs> and oh bags my and dirt God. and like yes. pictures um, of all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because we start a lot of times with activities that you might find for the classroom, but mm -hmm. amateur astronomers in general don't want to cut and paste and mm -hmm. definitely no glitter by the end of it. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're some, and they're working in the field. They're not working somewhere. It can be windy. It can be, it, of course, probably usually dark. Uh, so we have a lot of limitations on what kind of activities we can use in demos. So um, it's fun to to work out all those details. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wanted to show this. This was also in this toolkit. Oh, fantastic mm -hmm. poster from Kepler. The updated. That is all Kepler. They're amazing. It got, it got a little crushed for me, but that's okay because I have several from AAS. Oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, actually, yeah, I, I keep hoarding them. I promise to give them out on my blog, but I really need to, like, give them out and not hoard them all. Yeah, it's, the, it's is this the, can yes, this is the candidates, the Kepler candidates. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have all the wording um, with all the different um, suns, but NASA makes that, or when the government's not shut down, makes that available online, but you guys yeah. print it up a nice place. <laughs> yeah. How can the folks funny. request the toolkit that they want? I don't. Did you request that, Nicole? No, this one, this or, is the new one. It just came, and I was very excited. because yeah. I just They come that. automatically. Yeah, yeah. They come so, automatically. Okay. This one was a special one, too, this because was, this yeah. was an update for oh, a couple oh, of different okay. toolkits, yeah. and um, it was through a special grant from, I believe it was SETI uh, yeah. and Kepler. JPL and JPL Kepler. JPL and Kepler, yeah. through the right. whole, again, the grant. Process. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Funded by a lot of different mm -hmm. missions, uh, sometimes through the National Science Foundation, like I said, but mm -hmm. also a lot of different. Um, uh, we've been funded by the exoplanet programs, by different, like GLAST and uh, some of the high energy programs funded mm -hmm. the Supernova Toolkit. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I found so. some activities on the Chandra page, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And so what the clubs do is they log two events and tell us about what they did, and mm -hmm. then they automatically receive the next toolkit. Mm -hmm. So oh. they, it just comes every quarter, uh, we send out a whole new set of toolkits. Until can they you, get them all. Yeah. <laughs> can you yeah. request back toolkits if you're a new club? Yeah, you'll end mm -hmm. up getting them all. You usually start okay. with the newest, and then we just mm -hmm. kind of work our way back. But if there's stuff. a special event that you you know you're going to be doing or something, yeah, you can too, always we'll, request we can one. accommodate. We're, yeah. <laughs> we know a lot of really want meteorite name. or meteor wrong. That's why. I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I have several yeah. meteorites. I don't have any. I don't have any meteor. I, I actually carry them in my purse. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Handy more than you would realize. Um, but I don't have that one. Wrong. No. <laughs> oh, we have a lot of meteor wrongs. I promise yeah. I will share it with the STEM Center too. But awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know I'll what? If you log two events. Back. I'll we'll keep send it to you in January. I'll keep logging my events. So. Oh, good. You're good. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's really you. helpful because I have to report that stuff since I'm part of an academic department. Right. I have to report that stuff in our annual report, so I just keep mm -hmm. track. Of count. And you know, it's really great when you have high school teachers. They keep track of their students that came. Awesome. I ask them the number at the end of the mm -hmm. day. Oh, that's, <laughs> so that's great. I'm having a great yeah. time. So you guys are definitely helping me out <laughs> big time. So even if you're not a traditional astronomy club, like it's me and one of our physics professors that that does this, um, you could really benefit from the Nice, nice Sky Network. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. yeah, we have like high school clubs. Yep. Um, Observatories. Mm -hmm. um, There's national parks and stuff too that, that do work with it too. Yep. Yeah, you just Rangers. have to have 15 club members and I mm -hmm. think you guys qualify because you had a lot of students in the mm -hmm. astronomy club. Um, and you have to do outreach to the public. So it's not mm -hmm. just for internal club use. We hope that these things, they're designed to, to be um, used with the public, although a lot of clubs also use them for educating their own members, which mm -hmm. is fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so Guido asks, um, dealing with bad weather is surely one of your most difficult challenges. What do you do if an event is rained out and it's too late to cancel? He asks because it's raining buckets. <laughs> ah. I'm so sorry. If you have any shelter, um, mm -hmm. there are a lot of ways to get around that. And mm -hmm. I brought one here. I'm going to share. Ooh. This is the. Um, they're not all about exo. Um, about 
aliens, but I think everything I brought is. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, um, for people, people yeah. love aliens. It's Every... okay. We love aliens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, this one's called Extreme Organisms, and you hand out one of these cards mm. to, do you want to do the banner? Yeah. Um, you hand out one of these cards to each of the, mm -hmm. uh, of your visitors who are there, and you play a little game with them, and it's... Mm -hmm. uh, Does that say Snotites? Wait. I know. Not -tites. It's not -tites. <laughs> they live in caves, and they, are, they will do caustic burns to your skin. Yeah, they're crazy. So yeah. it's got different information about these, these crazy organisms that oh. live all over Everyone's in the very... Oh, <gasps> <Yeah>. The <laughs> water there. <laughs> exactly. I want to hug a tardigrade. <laughs> <laughs> There's a plush doll of tardigrades I've um, seen on ThinkGeek. <laughs> uh, my wish list. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you go through all these things like who can live in the hot temperatures, who can live without sunlight, who can live, mm -hmm. you know, in really low or high pressures. And there's a companion to that. What is it? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and then the kind of punchline of this. Don't, if you if you're just going to do this one soon, don't listen. Turn your headphones off. Um, uh, the punchline is spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah. spoiler alert. <laughs> Who here can live without water? And the answer is really nobody. That's kind of our common denominator going on. Is mm -hmm. is it, it proves or doesn't prove anything, but it illustrates the point that uh, everything that we know of. Mm -hmm. That's life as we know it needs water to survive on Earth. So um, that's talk. That gives them kind of an intro to talk about why we're looking for habitable planets in zones that. Oh, and there we go. Yeah. Um, and and then this where it's is, like, what do you think? Say, Conan the Bacterium could live on. Right. Yeah. You can, you can talk about these crazy worlds yeah. in our own solar system that mm -hmm. you know have water or could potentially have subsurface water. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's lots of fun. Cool. Hey, so first find some shelter. On the other side of the, the banner, actually. Say it again? I say first find shelter, okay. then yes. whip out the informational <laughs> card. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> shelter first. Yeah. I mean, they shelter work first. for shelter. I mean, this, yeah. this will oh, yeah. shelter you. You can <laughs> use the banner. But that's not the recommended uh, use. <laughs> we make these out of vinyl just in case. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <Beautiful>. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, we have a. Um, I think you played this at the okay, ASPX. Okay, here's actually. another one. I think we um, already got you with this one, so don't give anything away. I won't. This is an Earth timeline. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> this is an Earth timeline. You can also do this on your body if you don't happen to have yeah. the banner with you. Mm -hmm. um, but oh. the banner illustrates a lot of cool things, like what the Earth might have looked like at different points. There are a lot of more artist conceptions. Some of them are actual pictures of the Earth you can in take places these, that might uh, look like what it looked like three yeah. billion years ago. Um, and then we've got these little, do you have this? Yeah, <laughs> the teardrops of all these different events in the history of Earth. Um, oh, OK. Evolution, although we well, never ever network. have to say evolution because some clubs are in places where that's a hard thing to say. Yeah. You can um, say to the general public. Mm. Progression. Wow. Progression um, of blood. You know, they're like things, yeah. You gotta you gotta take your audience into account. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot of this, homeschoolers actually. Yeah, really this gives uh, people a chance to guess where you think these things occurred. Mm. And there are clues on there about what you know what the atmosphere is light and things like yeah. that. Um, and I, I have had many college professors who have gotten this terribly, terribly wrong. Oh, yeah. I, I got it wrong. A lot of people get it wrong. Well, they're revising the oh. dates all the time still, too. It's true. They do revise the dates. But these are pretty well, you know, pretty, yeah, general mm -hmm. things. So even just single-celled to multicellular organisms mm -hmm. take, you know, half the history of Earth mm -hmm. to get there. Yeah. Um, but then it's really mm -hmm. interesting. You can do it on your hands if you hold your arms out. Mm -hmm. There's a picture that's of a Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of illustrated there. Um, and if you if you go to the very oh. end, yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, you go to the very end of your timeline where this is where we are right now. Yeah. On the very end. Um, dinosaurs lived, turns out, like this middle knuckle. Of your, uh, they lived that whole knuckle right there, which is kind of a long time yeah. for, for an organism to live. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, there. There <laughs> they are. Dinosaurs. The Brachiosaurus. <laughs> Everything else. <laughs> and if you took a nail file to your end of your finger, you could erase all of human history.
all of, not just history, but like all of so like right, prime beef right all right there. Yeah. Right yes. there with that chip in my <laughs> that nail. That chip. The chip in the nail Gone. polish is probably yeah, bigger than yeah. the history. <laughs> You're taking out early primates too. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Yeah. yeah. That's it. So, I mean, just the short amount of time we've been here. But it's funny because <laughs> the, some of the other things you find is people often just assume that all life is at the very end too. Right. Like in that, well, get that. So a lot of the things you do is like distant scales and how things will be relative. Because like, no, actually, life has been on Earth for like a huge amount of time. Right. But just really not very complex time. life. Yeah. Yeah. The same with like distant scales. Some people will just kind of, it's just very understandable. They'll think, oh, like the Earth to Jupiter, Jupiter must be like a thousand times like wider. And it's like, yeah. no, 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 it's not that big. Or like a million times. <laughs> yeah. And like, it's actually not that big. <laughs> You know, and like yeah. this, it'll get like out of proportion in that way too. Right, right, right. It, the sizes, the times and distances and sizes are so vast that it just, yeah, really as you know, is yeah. difficult to describe. But some of them are very interactive, which for little kids is great. Yeah. 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 Like um, one of them is a size and distance scale of the solar system, <laughs> and you eventually have kids running off about like half a mile away yeah. to do Neptune. Yeah. And, which is great. It's like, yeah, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> you out there. Keep going. <laughs> you've got like a bunch of little kids right in front of you for the yeah. inner solar system. And you're like, no, no, keep going. They're like, no way. No, you're falling away. <laughs> that one comes with a huge uh, one meter sun, and so it's scaled to that. And oh there's actually a setup of lots of little balls and beads yeah. that are the actual size of the planets compared to the one meter sun. And that's one of our most popular, oh, I think. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's great I just to have. have like a pumpkin um, for the sun. And we have nice. a little edible. I see a pumpkin right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> and you can, you know, there are other edible, like, like yes. Or apple Food. And yes. oranges and uh, like nerds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> planetary scales. Um, it's a bit smaller, so it goes like around a track at, at one of the schools that I used oh, to Perfect. Visit. Nice. Yeah, it's great. Just get them outside and just keep going. Yeah. yeah. Find the chalk mark that says N. Yeah. <laughs> have fun. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. You guys have activities that sound like they work for a lot of, you know, a long, big range of ages, which if you're working with the public, that's what you're going to get. Um, exactly. Do you give instructions for addressing different ages? Do you almost, I can almost envision like two different versions of an activity maybe, depending mm -hmm. on you know, the age of the person you're talking to. I just wonder if you ever you ever think about stuff like that when you're developing these or working with these, or you kind of go for like a middle range of person? Some of them are designed for younger or older, and we, we give you the age range on the activity. And most of them can be used even fairly young. Um, they probably won't get it as well as older, you know, people who have a little bit better idea of where we are even yeah. in our own solar system. It takes a while to kind of get that. There's still a lot of discretion to the individual presenter. Yeah. But we try to, it, it really, we try to go for sort of a middle ground. Yeah. Just sort of like, I'd say teens. Yeah, teens and up. I mean, yeah. you know, you would find uh, many, many third graders who know a lot more than their parents about yeah. astronomy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. And some of the activities that seem like they'd be a little kind of kiddish, like we have one that's just like the standard, like, spheres on little pegs. You know, like here's the Saturn sphere or the ring, and then here's Jupiter, and you arrange them on a little strip. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, that's like the, the classic, like little kids' class activity thing. But then parents will come up. I've had yeah. this at um, doing like a, a our first Fridays. I've done it, and the parents come up like, oh wow, awesome, and they'll start playing with. The, sometimes the kids are just like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's you know the audience is always crazy. Yeah, but, you never know, but. It's really cool when you kind of spark that connection and, yeah, you get mm -hmm. someone who's, oh, it's awesome, and, you know, you didn't think they would really get anything big out of it, but mm -hmm. you never know what grabs people, so. No, and, mm -hmm. you know, we try and not use any jargon that, you know, your average third grader wouldn't understand, honestly, mm -hmm. um, and we try to explain anything that, any concepts that we introduce that are new, so, and just model that for the amateur astronomers, because often they'll say things assuming that, somebody understands without really getting mm -hmm. that light year is probably more complex than most people really yeah. Um, yeah. understand on a They think it's a unit of time. Yeah, they think of it instead exactly. of distance. Which There's is, a lot of confusion oh, about Star that. Wars. I know, I was just yeah. going to say, parsecs. <laughs> no, Hansel, that's yeah. not how parsecs work. <laughs> <laughs> but you're the pilot, so. 
Yeah. We'll leave it to you. What yeah. else? Awesome. You understand Huey, so you're all good. Yeah, you must have something we don't. <laughs> oh, so we have a uh, couple more comments. Cool discussion, and also uh, on YouTube, Julie. Yeah, it can't be YouTube. It's got to be in Google Plus because YouTube doesn't allow links. Put a link to the Milwaukee Astro newsletter so you can check that out. Oh, oh awesome. That. Cool. Yeah, thanks. That can't be on YouTube. No, it's on Google Plus. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I know which <laughs> comment sources block links. So. So, do you guys, do you guys have a favorite activity or another one you want to show off? Um, I think that was all we brought. Okay. I cool. didn't think. No. Yeah. Oh no, you know what? You got... Aha. Oh, okay. I always have some hiding. <laughs> Me too. I actually have a lot of them in my house, scattered around at this point too. It's sort of funny. Like people come over and it's like, what's this? Why do you have a bunch of cards about bugs? I'm like, oh, those are those are extremophiles. Those are weird creatures that, like, what? Well, actually, that's my favorite. I it's have like these, actually. coffee table reading. Yeah. I have these in my office. I'm on the wall. I just love looking at them. Great conversation starters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and people have heard about a couple of them, like, you know, oh, water bears. Yeah. You know, or what are those? And, you know, you can chat about them. It's pretty fun. Yeah. I thought I had one of them here. Uh, my mm -hmm. son must have taken off with the moon balls. Oh, but, no. um, <laughs> that happened. Really great noises when you drop on hardwood floors. Um, one of the most interesting ones, I think, that gets the most wows for me, and you'll just have to use your imagination, or an orange, or any other ball you happen to have around. Um, if the moon is out during the day, um, taking... Um, a solid ball and holding it up next to the moon so that you're in the sunlight and it the sunlight lights up the same side of the moon as our moon. Oh, wait. It's a huge aha for people. Oh, okay. um, and amateur astronomers get to do this a lot because we're outside a lot. Yeah. Um, but anytime, <laughs> anytime, go ahead, bring it on. Um, what did he find? He found. Yeah. Well, we're not gonna. We we haven't got the real moon out. Um, yeah. And we're not outside, but you'll just have to use your imaginations. Or if you go to the YouTube website, um, you can see a video of it in action. Um, uh, that's a really big aha for people who don't understand moon phases. I think which that is everyone. Is, which yeah, which is everyone. everyone. It's all of which us. Which was me point. until I was twenty. I was Thank in school you, before I knew. I know. <laughs> I was a I was an undergrad uh, astronomy major. <laughs> yeah, I. Me too. Yeah. I was yeah. celebrating so a friend's birthday at a at the uh, tiki bar, um, <laughs> right after the um, uh, astronomical society meeting. Actually, and we popped out, and the moon was hanging low. And they're like, "Oh, Dave, is that waxing or waning?" I'm like, "Wait, no, that's too technical right now." Oh, <laughs> duh, duh, duh. <laughs> Thank. Yeah. And then you go to the southern hemisphere, and it's backwards. Right. Um, <laughs> no, it's yeah. <laughs> you don't want to think about that. <laughs> no. I just stared totally at the three-quarter different. moon that was backwards for like ten minutes, going, "Wait a second! Wait a second! Uh, that's so cool. Yeah, that's cool." <laughs> How about activities that are more popular with the the clubs? Do you collect? You probably know which activities or toolkits are being used mm -hmm. maybe more often than others. Do you have a Idea about One of the biggest ones that? right now, aside from the meteorites and meteorons, is huge. Yeah. Because really yeah. interactive, it's funny if it's yeah. meteorites. Yeah. That's but another one is um, um, our magnetic sun's yeah. actually really great because mm. it's designed to deal with the sun and it's a daytime activity and all the time clubs are asked to do to come to schools in the day and you know yeah. do some observing yeah. and it's like, what do you do? <laughs> you, know, you know, you can bring your sun spotter. Your mm -hmm. solar telescope, but then you can also do all these activities about the sun. And yeah. Kids love them, but yeah. you have to watch your magnets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll oh, you walk even... away. <laughs> we can do one of them right here for you. Um, you want to do the sunspot activity? Um, so, mm -hmm. so one of them. We have a lot of cards similar to these uh, observing mm -hmm. cards. Actually, they're kind of designed after them. That are. Uh, the sun cards have lots of different sun facts about them. Some are about mm -hmm. magnetism, some are about um, sun spots, and that's what I can I can show you that. Oh. <laughs> so, Dave, would you be the circus of the sun now? <laughs> hey, Quick, do some dial really up cool to yoga. six thousand um, kilometers. Are we doing this? Just yeah. put your arm out. Put my arm out. Yeah. Okay. Oh wait, have you seen this tattoo? Oh, I know. I was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was part of my job application. That is actually why you're hired. <laughs> and. Oh, yeah. We got Huygens on one side. Wait, yeah. Christian <laughs> Huygens and then Galileo. Oh, Galileo. Cool. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
I had to tell my mom, remember when you told me not to get a tattoo and no one would hire me? <laughs> <laughs> it was up there with playing video games wouldn't get me a job, and then I worked at a video game Exactly. Company. Don't dye your <laughs> hair funny color. Exactly. Right? You don't look professional. <laughs> 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 All right, so this okay. is talking about the surface of the sun, and Dave mm -hmm. is going to be the surface of the sun, the mm -hmm. visible surface of the sun, but now you're in my You're, you're blocking my view. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is underneath the, surf, the visible surface of the sun, there's um, wild magnetism going on, and sometimes those magnetic loops pop through the surface of the sun, and this right here, where they pop through the surface, is actually where we see um, sunspots. So... Um, they usually come in pairs and we see them and um, when sometimes these magnetic uh, loops pop through and they get all twisted up and then they can break and that's when we can get um, solar storms, we call them solar storms because that makes I think the most sense and then mm -hmm. we can talk about solar weather and solar storms so a lot of it a lot of the activities are just examples that you can do so that people kind of understand a little better. You know, we can't see these magnetic fields, but we can see their footprints, mm -hmm. basically. And that's what you're looking at when you're looking at sunspots. Um, so just a different way of explaining what you're looking at. That's which is in... Yeah, Ms. you've got some right behind you. Right <laughs> <laughs> oh, she does, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I have Pac-Man I don't know what yeah. you're looking at. Oh, you do. <laughs> Yeah, so you could have your audience do that too. So that exactly. nice little demo you guys just did, yeah. Which I, like we have another one where we simulate kind of a solar yeah. storm, and um, you have the kid, like a little kid or someone or adult or whoever. It's like a little boomerang looking thing. That's another one you get to watch for though, because sometimes <laughs> the kid will run off and be like, no, 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 no not boomerang. <laughs> but it's got a series of magnets on it, and then you roll it over a few compasses. That's meant oh. to simulate the magnetic field, and you see the compasses go crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the nice Absolutely. thing is, is there's been so much publicity about um, solar storms recently mm -hmm. that people mm -hmm. have started to hear about, oh, wait, that's when my cell reception might get bad, yeah. or we might lose power. It's like, yes. Yeah. And then you get to show them pictures of Aurora, and people love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's explaining common phenomena and common questions that we get as mm -hmm. amateur astronomers. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 kind of I mean is there like a repository of common questions? I wonder if that's something you guys have or. Mm. Well, I was just thinking too. That'd be a great yeah. thing to sort of document and. That's make been fun. actually um, a personal project of mine because I have a bunch of friends that have been asking stuff, but it, right now it's just in a very sloppily edited Google Doc that I have <laughs> just on my own. But that's something we, should, we could totally we should do. send it out to them and see what their yeah. most common questions are. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Wow. What's yeah. a black hole? It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Can I How see can we see a black hole? Doesn't involve like get trapped in it. Like that's my favorite one because that's really yes. Cool. Well, yeah, that's actually a really good question too. Yeah. Like, we get that all the time. Like, where's the black hole in the center of the galaxy? I don't yeah. see it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Or like you know, ah. they know that they will, they'll see the lack of it or whatever. Right. Yeah. And it's like, well, it's that's actually hot. different wavelengths of light, and yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. We Put have on your board. radio eyes. I call them my yes. radio eyes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if your eyes are radio telescopes, Dishes, somebody yeah, needs exactly. to Photoshop that. Somebody, somebody needs to Photoshop me with radio telescopes. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that could be your new logo. That could be your new logo right there. <laughs> Ryan, Steve, are you listening? <laughs> it's funny, actually. Um, I've had a lot of questions like when we talk about, like, like people ask, like, the Hubble. Like, I hear the Hubble. It's, like, different pictures, so it's fake. You know, it's like oh, they, they the look at it and you can't are fake. see. Yeah. And then we'll, I'll bring yeah. up something like, have you seen the movie Predator? <laughs> and usually, yes. And it's like, well, that's actually sort of how the Hubble looks. Wow. Yeah, like infrared. Okay. Oh, you know, yeah, that's, that's how right. the they predator's hunting right. and infrared or switch to x-ray or yeah. whatever. And we it's like, we it's actually been... really helpful for some people to go, oh, oh. Wow. It's kind of funny. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Mm -hmm. We have an activity about that that shows cell phone reception over the U.S. and how, mm -hmm. okay, these are representational. You know, it shows, okay, the red gets no cell phone reception and the green gets great cell phone reception. Everything in between is mm -hmm. different amounts, kind of like the um, spectrum you have behind you. It looks a little like that. And then, but there's a representational color picture of cell phone coverage in the U.S., and that is really easy to understand. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you can say, well, that's kind of what we're doing with a lot of these pictures, is each of these colors represents something different, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily the visible wave. Yeah. Like, that's not what the U.S. looks like if you take a picture of it. <laughs> but it does give you a lot of good information. Mm -hmm. 
And then you can point out where the Radio Quiet Zone is in Green Bank and talk about uh-huh. radio astronomy. Exactly. I will work in whenever I can. Mm-hmm. I love it. I need to take a vacation there. Just, like, yeah. oh, I didn't get your call. No. No. Sorry. <laughs> no Wi-Fi, no cell phone. Wow. It's, it's, uh, NPR just did a story on it, so it's up in the I did. I know. I just heard something part of that. Part of huh. Thinking of you, yeah. Yay. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. Great. Um, so I would like to put out the call for any last questions or comments from you guys watching um, while we, I guess, start to wrap up. Um, mm-hmm. Trying to give out any other questions. Is there anybody out there who's a member of the Night Sky Network who's listening in? Mm-hmm. Yeah, somebody wave. I know we Terry love- Terry was going to try and watch. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I told her about it last night. Yeah. Cool. If Julie, if you're watching and you are not, or if Milwaukee Astro is not already a part, you guys should join, but they probably are. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, Guido is in Germany, so I was wondering if you know of any um, similar network type things that are international or in the EU or anything like that. Well, there is Astronomers Without Borders, mm-hmm. and they're an amazing group of people. Um, and. Also, all of the resources that we have are freely available online. You can download yes. any of these activities, um, and they're fairly easy to make. We tell you how to get the uh, materials if they're not readily available. Um, so you can, of course, that was the star our goal maps are too, just to make sure that you could duplicate it by the trip to Michael's or wherever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> star maps are only Northern and Hemisphere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just went there for fabric glue. <laughs> Me too! Oh, nice. I'm doing some Babylon 5 cosplay. <laughs> Uh, wait, I I literally got a Babylon 5 patch and I needed to reapply it to my backpack. Oh, <laughs> it was God. for Star Fury Squadron member. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everything yeah. is awesome. So there you go. Uh, you know, you, can, you guys can look at that. And yeah, Astronomers Without Borders is really awesome. In fact, yeah. I think they're still doing, are they still doing the solar glasses drive? They are. Yes. They're doing the solar glasses yes. drive right now. They're amazing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I just gave ten bucks. Great. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think a we dollar gets one a pair of solar viewing glasses for kids in, in the path, in or near the path of totality of the eclipse coming up mm-hmm. yeah, next Africa. month. That's so cool. Uh-huh. This month? This month. October, yeah. we're already here. <laughs> yeah. There's been so much happening this month. That's kind of a shame. I'm actually a little I had a great article, actually, I was going to put up at the beginning yeah. of the month about all the great stuff you can observe and participate mm. in, and then we, you know, because of the shutdown, it's like, hold, hold. Oh, Tell so. us now. Observe the moonlight. I mean, um, the International Observe the, night, observe the Moonlight is Saturday, and that's a Saturday. real big one. Yeah, the so. 12th. Don't Yay. miss that. Juno's flying by tonight if you've got a if you've got a radio, was it a CB or a radio, a ham radio? If People you're a ham radio operator, you can Morse code at Juno, uh, hi mm. Juno. Um, mm. Or you can use Instagram, which I don't really? know either. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not really it, but there's a hashtag on Instagram wow. that's celebrating it as well. Yeah. And so that's believe... going on. INOM, International Observe the Moon Night, is exactly. Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, look for an event near you, International, just Google International Observe the Moon Night. Um, that'll take you to their website. I know George is doing an event oh, here uh, in Edwardsville. Here in Edwardsville, Illinois, go to Annie's. Yes. We're sitting mm-hmm. there eating custard, and we'll have Night Sky activities, <laughs> Night Sky Network, excuse me, activities there because Terry, the Astro Club, always brings some. So we'll be doing that Saturday night. And I'll be mm-hmm. in Boulder doing something yeah. along yeah. with the Boulder Science Festival. So I think yay. They're, they're over um, 60, 70 like events it. now on mm-hmm. the Night Sky Network listed. So oh, pretty much all over the country you can find an event. If you go to the Night Sky Network, again, not just mm-hmm. to find a club, you can find an event mm-hmm. happening find an event. coming up in your area. There's so. actually, um, if you're getting an early hop on the moon, International Observing the Moon Night, if you're up at like midnight on um, like 11 through 12, there's um, three of Jupiter's moons are putting a shadow across on Ooh. their shadows on Jupiter, oh. which is like, extremely rare to be able to see hey, three shadows on the moon that. on Jupiter at once. That's what we're doing. So. Is this Friday night? Saturday yeah. Night? Friday night, Saturday morning. Okay. Mm-hmm. So be Boulder without if, my telescope, so mm-hmm. I'll have to ah. make... <laughs> oh, Boulder's got a great astronomy club. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, we're gonna, I'm going to raid Phil Plate's garage and see what yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kidding, yeah. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready. But no, we'll be doing the science festival there, so I know there's okay. an cool. INOM event associated with that. I don't know where it is. If I'm going, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You can just nightskyinfo.org, nightskynetwork.org, sorry. Yeah. Um, 
Observethemoonnight.org is for the yeah. INOM stuff mm-hmm. specifically. And they feature right. moon mappers on their front page. Thank you. <gasps> cool. <Yay>! Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, we love you. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's really cool stuff. Uh, the Draconids was just happening, but there wasn't mm-hmm. a meteor shower, but there wasn't much. I yeah. saw one. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> we had it was fog. Spectacular. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> So the ISS is always passing over. Go look at that. that happened right at the beginning of my thing. Unlike in gravity, the ISS is still fine. <laughs> I love that. Have it, too, have it, too, have it, too. No spoilers. I've seen it in the commercials. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Awesome. Well, this was really fun. I love talking with you guys. So thank you so much. Um, especially mm-hmm. since, you know, you guys are not shut down, but sort of on hold. I don't know yeah. what the... Yeah, We're in, like, neutral yeah. stealth oh. mode. Yes, <laughs> so of. thank you for coming <laughs> to our show and, and being awesome with us. Um, yeah, thank you so fun. much. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for having yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, so nightskynetwork.org, is it? Mm-hmm. That should get you there. It all pretty much points yeah. you there. Also, go to their YouTube channel, Night Sky Network. The instructional videos are fantastic. Uh, if you have an astronomy club, you definitely want to sign up. Um, it, I, like I said, it, it helps me keep track of my my events and my attendees, which I have to report anyway. Which is awesome. Fantastic. That's what we want to do. And we're on uh, Facebook as well and Twitter. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Facebook. Uh, yes, that's right. You guys are on Twitter, mm-hmm. Night Sky Network. I don't think I know where you are on Facebook. It's probably the same thing. So. Night Sky mm-hmm. Network. Can't miss us. Mm-hmm. Although awesome. we're quiet there this week, Quiet too. at the moment, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Soon we'll be back right. up. I'm itching. Back. I want to yeah. update. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, it's happening. It's all happening. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, so I want to give you guys a rundown of the upcoming uh, hangouts with CosmoQuest. So today's Wednesday, which means that Friday is the weekly space hangout. Uh, we we were shut down last week, not because of the government, but because we were all busy. Um, <laughs> who actually went to see Gravity, and he had so that was his excuse. Ah. But other than that, uh, they will be back. I say they because I'll be on a plane, but uh, the they will be back doing your space news this Friday. Hopefully, every you know there'll be a bunch of people there. Um, they've all done their homework. Uh, mm-hmm. That is at noon Pacific on Friday, and then the virtual star party. So if you can't get out to an astronomy club near you, or it is super cloudy, uh, there's it's always clear somewhere. Almost always clear somewhere. So uh, mm-hmm. the virtual star party mm-hmm. happens Sunday night. I think it's at 8 p.m. Pacific now they've been slowly pulling it back yeah. some so it's a little bit earlier for you know you East Coast folks who have trouble staying up as late as they they're up which I totally get mm-hmm. um, and then one day uh, Fraser and Pamela record astronomy cast although she might be in Poland so I don't know if that's happening mm-hmm. I'll have to double check that before mm-hmm. I send out the newsletter uh, so that's our, our lineup for, for the rest of the week uh, and Dave and Vivian if you have any last minute thoughts about Night Sky Network or anything astronomy you want to leave our viewers with just get out under those stars and look mm-hmm. up. There's a lot. To so see. much to see. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't know what you're looking at, find your local astronomy club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a thank you from Guido. Uh, thanks, Vivian and Dave. That was absolutely fascinating. I love your enthusiasm. And uh, thanks for thinking of me out in Germany. <laughs> so oh, we can help ourselves awesome. out a little bit when the weather cool. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Guido. If we could be international, we would. We would, absolutely, <laughs> in a heartbeat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Awesome sauce. All right, so that's it for learning space this week. I am possibly going to go see Gravity now. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's fun. totally worth the actual oh. 3D, too. I know, I know. It's like All the right. only movie. Yeah. <laughs> cool. You mean Sharknado 3D wouldn't be worth it? There's now <laughs> Shark Avalanche, too. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh. We, have a we have a shark episode at some point. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody.